What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride West Side of Attack once again. And if you'd like to sport a super awesome t shirt, be sure to check it out in the description below. Today is going to be the very first episode of Mining Farm Wars, and hence why I'm adorning the beautiful shirt I bought your GPU because this is where all the GPUs are going. At least that's what I'm being told. But basically, we're splitting up Mining Rig Wars and Mining Farm Wars, so you guys get not one, but two episodes of super awesome mining goodness every week. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back. Starting things off, we have Farm A, and you can vote for it up here in the corner. It's named Towering Inferno, so a great one to start off with by Ed. His first rig is an Intel i3 3.9 gigahertz processor with the Biostar TB250 BTC Pro, featuring eight Sapphire RX 470 eight gigabyte cards, the Corsair Vengeance eight gigabytes of DDR4, and a WD Green SSD 120 gigabyte with two Corsair TX 850M power supplies. Rig 2 is rocking the Intel Celeron G3930 with once again the same motherboard as previously and also rocking 8 Sapphire RX 478GB cards with the Corsair Vengeance 8GB DDR4 3000 memory and once again the WD Green SSD 120GB but instead of two power supplies he has a single uh, Zigma Tech X Miner 1600 watt power supply. Super curious on that one personally. Next we have Rig 3 finally for this one and he's rocking the Intel Pentium G4600 and again the Biostar TB250 BTC Pro and 8 Sapphire RX 478 gigabytes once again featuring the same memory however switching it up to the King Max SSD 120 gigabytes and apparently went ahead and bought the Zigma Tech X Miner 1600 watt power supply again. So I'm assuming that's some pretty good news for us if we're looking at that power supply in particular. And his total hash rate is 576 mega hash a second. Farm B is MO by the Waginator. He's rocking the Asus B250 Mining Expert with a Celeron G3930, 120 gigabyte SSD, with four MSI Armor RX 580s, four MSI Armor RX 470s, and two Power Color RX 570s. With the Cooler Master V1200 and Inland 600 watt power supplies, he's rocking about 277 mega hash a second on that particular rig. And then on his second rig, he has the ASRock FM2A88X Extreme 6 with the AMD A6-7400K and eight gigs of RAM. Mixing it up here and using older parts is something I always like to see. Might as well put them to work. He's got three RX Vega 56s on this one and the EVGA Supernova G3 1000 watt power supply. And he's a smart man here as he's put it on XMR with 5600 hash a second. So I think that's pretty, pretty good. He put the cards that are more, you know, split these rigs up properly to where he has one on ETH and one on XMR, depending on, of course, the particular GPU's power or particular GPU specialty here. Next, we have Farm C Devon by Tony. This is a really cool custom rack that he built himself with a refrigerator water cooling system. In rig one, he has the H81 Pro BTC R2.0, six RX 580s, eight gigabytes of DDR3, and a 4150 i3 CPU with a spare 256 gigabyte SSD they had laying around. And on rig two, he's got the H110 Pro BTC Plus motherboard with nine RX 580s, another stick of DDR4 this time, eight gigabytes still, and a spare Samsung SSD, the 850 EVO 250 gigabyte, with the G4600 processor in this one. Total hash rates around 144 mega hash a second for all the rigs. 
Next, we have Farm D, The Office. I named it because he didn't by Alan. And he is rocking every single rig is matching the two rigs that you see here. I shouldn't say every single, but he's rocking the ASRock H110 BTC Plus, of course, with eight gigs of RAM and the Kingston hard drive sticks. I guess he's talking about the flash drives, the EVGA 1600 watt platinum power supply, a Furman volt amp meter rack mount power conditioner, a slide out rack mount keyboard and mouse tray, and a 19 inch monitor for that rack mount, of course he says, and six RX 588 gigabytes, the black editions, and a 14U open frame rack. He's only mining Ethereum, and his total hash rate is 348 mega hash a second. Finally, we have Farm E, the central processing unit, and probably the craziest thing I've seen submitted so far. He's rocking 92, wait for it, Dell Latitude E7440s with the i5 4600U processor and 256 gigabytes of SSD in it with 8 gigabytes of RAM. It turbo boosts up to 2.6 gigahertz and no GPU in these. He has 92 130 watt Dell power supplies, which is a total of 11.96 kilowatts of available power and four trip light 24 port power strips and 92 16 gigabyte USB uh, flash drives here running Ubuntu 16.04. And all miners are set to power on with AC power and can be controlled remotely without opening the lid. The network connection is Wi-Fi using a Unify AC, which is ubiquity guys, Unify AC Pro uh, access point and removing the back plates keeps them as cool as about 45 to 50 C, 17 watts per miner with a total of 1.56 kilowatts at the wall. And the batteries removed and lids closed, the power does not fluctuate because of this. And he's mining Monero, this is just super interesting, seven kilohash a second. My real question is here, where do you find 92 Dell Latitudes and why? Uh, <laughs> that's my, you know, we, we saw the Vegas earlier. Three of the Vegas were about five kilohash a second. So you have to get all of these Dell Latitudes for essentially cheaper than you would get. Uh, what would that be? Four, uh, cheaper than four RX 56s. So less than four thousand dollars for 92 dell latitudes was that possible where all of these just picked up out of the garbage how did you get all the latitudes matching and then that rack mount and all of that work it's just super impressive i can tell though that just from looking at riggy he has to have some sort of it experience because he's using things that are that, that i would think of uh, for this, you know that you would you would find possibly in uh, data center environments So like the trip lights, you know, like the ubiquity AP. That's a pretty good go-to So I'm wondering if he just you know, this is all throwaway stuff in, in uh, His from his business and that's how he ended up with this in hand and then just converted into a uh, mining craziness rig uh, This is super it's super cool it, it's super cool. Uh, New Paradigm Productions, by the way. Going back through these though, uh, Farm D, the office, everything here is looking like it's getting ready to roll out. I think he specified that he was testing these kind of rigs out to see how well they did. And I think he's going to go further on with this. He's got, uh, you know, running the right o OS, of, of course. I think he's got the, the USB drive, so that's good to note. It looks like he's got some simple mining, it looks like to me, up on the uh, screens there. I like that big TV hanging back there too, so you can monitor your rigs and watch some TV. You know, pretty good stuff. Everything here, the rigs are spec'd out. Uh, according to best practices in my humble opinion so it's ready to go those 14u uh, racks they can get pretty hefty in price so you want to be a little bit careful with that but they can also come in very handy for of course a setup like this you could fit a lot more cards into each of those too I think moving on to or back through farm C now I think the focus here is going to be the refrigerated water water cooling system for these rigs with everything sealed off and you know pushing the heat out I'm not sure whether this is located if it's located in a garage or what but uh, I'd be super interested in more 
less of the actual parts that are what I would call pretty standard and more into like what kind of uh, what kind of coolings going on there what the temperatures are which he did seem to list he says that the temperatures are all under 60 C so he's got 60 57 59 20 58 and 60 C that's at least for rig one uh, rig two we don't seem to have anything for but you know those are pretty good numbers for you know for rx 580s so obviously it's working but i don't know what the power consumption's at and what the overclocks are at either it'd be more impressive if he had these fully overclocked with a custom firmware and was getting around 30 mega hash a second which it does look like he's getting because he does say 30 30 29 29 uh 30 30 and so that would typically in a normal open air environment run you closer to 70 75 c so that's about a 10 to 15 degree decrease with whatever uh, custom frame that he's done here. So props on that. Moving on to Farm B M O, he's basically gone with the shoe rack method of hanging the GPUs up like meat. The first rig is what I would consider a standard mining rig with a very good laid out kind of plan behind it. While the one that intrigues me a little bit more is the one with the AMD A6 7400K in it because that, that just screams to me that he repurposed some old equipment, whether that was an old gaming rig and so on. That's super impressive to find out. He is only running three Vega 56s on it, so that tells me that either that board doesn't support more or he couldn't afford to buy more yet, and I want to answer that question before giving my kind of full thoughts on that particular motherboard, the Extreme 6 from ASRock. And we'll just have to get those answers from them, hopefully, in the comment section below. Finally, farm A, the Towering Inferno. Every rig in this setup is laid out pretty much, like I said before, to best practices. Aside from the fact that because of the SSDs, I'm assuming he's running Windows 10, which can now, especially with the latest updates, cause some reliability and kind of prevent you from running 24 seven. I do have a video you can check out up here in the corner that helps you out turn off some of the things like Windows updates permanently and kind of can keep you up, you know, 24 seven a little bit more reliably, but Linux is just the way to go now. So that'd be my only complaint here. Everything else is, is about right. Of course, the actual rig build is custom wood frame stackable that he builds himself and it does look like it's functioning very well. So props on that. And that's going to pretty much wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of Farm Wars. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe down below. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts as well as all the Amazon affiliate links. If you want to purchase some stuff, I get a kickback, of course, which helps us run the channel. I'll see you next Tuesday.